Welcome to my channel. Uh, I started this as a bit of an added hobby onto uh, my bike packing hobby. This is something I actually took on quite recently. Um, in fact, <laughs> I, I was completely unaware it was a thing. So I kind of thought I had invented the idea of taking a bicycle and a tent uh, and going somewhere and camping. Um, I'm exaggerating a little bit, but basically back during the pandemic summer of 2020, when here in Ireland we could start to move around again, uh, but there were limits on how many people could be at campsites, for instance. Um, I wanted to get away, uh, and with a friend, uh, with some friends actually, uh, we started to basically just camp in different places around the country. Uh, and on one of those occasions, in order to get there, I thought, well, I just cycled down, and uh, I was basically heading towards Dunmore East, uh, and I uh, wanted to go and have a look at stone circles in West Wicklow, so yeah, you know, Wicklow West of the the Dublin Mountains, the Wicklow Mountains, basically. Uh, and I thought, oh, sure, I'll just uh, cycle down and put a tent on the back and off I went. And then I camped at one of the lock gates on the barrow and then headed down the next day. And I had done a little bit of that previously. I'd uh, cycled from the Peak District in England back to Hollyhead over about three days. And in that case, I'd stayed at uh, B&Bs. Uh, but in both cases, I found that on the third day, my legs were pretty tired. I didn't really want to face hills anymore. So I thought... Uh, as we got into that autumn, I should get myself an electric bike uh, and that would make hills easier. Now, I looked at electric bikes maybe 10 years previously, but they hadn't really been good enough. Their range of them was very limited, maybe, you know, 40 kilometers uh, before you to charge a 50 would be as much as you could hope. But I, I'd seen the technology had come on. Uh, so I kind of uh, was looking. I didn't do a lot of research. I mean, I should have done more, but I was kind of lucky with the way I went. Uh, I realized it's a good idea to get a bike from a local provider because electric bikes do need more servicing than usual normal bikes. They're harder to do yourselves. The electric um, components in particular, they need a specialist computer that you're not going to buy for yourself. Uh, so you need a, a, a follow-up service to be available. So I did that. I bought it at a place called Green Air in Dublin. Um, and I knew I wanted to primarily to do touring on it. Uh, so I knew I knew it needed a back carrier, basically. Um and uh, I identified the Valley Motors Tour as a relatively cheap option, cheap for an electric bike, 2,700 euros isn't cheap. Uh, that would work for me. So that's the one that I went and got. And actually, I've done a, a video uh, of what that looks like after about six or 7,000 kilometers. Um, I've done reviews of some gear, um, uh, and I'd like to say that, uh, first of all, I'm not obviously not sponsored, you can probably tell. <laughs> by anybody or any connection to these manufacturers. Uh, and the sort of reviews I prefer to do is where I've actually used something a lot. Uh, so I've also done a tent review, um, and that's of my MSO Hubber after spending, uh, I, I think, about 150 nights over five or six years of it. You know, So uh, in other words, when I, as far as possible, if I'm, if I'm reviewing something, I've really tested it out and I've got ideas on it. I also have a few videos where I talk about how you might best do something like staying warm while you're sleeping, which is this one, um, where I basically look at the different uh, things I do. I, the short answer, by the way, to that is you layering works very well. Uh, and then the videos I started with were ones that simply described the routes I was following. I kind of wanted somewhere to store the footage I was shooting as much as anything else. Uh, so if you go right back to my archive, the very early ones are pretty basic. Uh, they're just some photos I've taken and then uh, some some video of me cycling along the road. Uh, and as I did that and uploaded stuff and people started to post comments on it, because I'm, I'm very, you know, I'm very interested in what people have to say in the comments, uh, you know, uh, both in terms of the places I'm going through, uh, but also the reaction to what I'm doing, my methods, the suggestions, all that sort of stuff. Uh, and you'll notice I generally respond to people pretty fast. Um, but as I did that, I saw, okay, there's actually genuine interest in this, um, and maybe I'll put a bit more effort into it. Now, I had uh, I've got a fair interest in photography. I've done various forms of photography, landscape of photography, uh, kind of news activist stuff over the years, shot video. Uh, so I have a background level of self-taught skills. So the, the neither terrible nor wonderful, <laughs> but I've always enjoyed developing those practically to being able to do stuff you know like i'm not really that interested in learning in the abstract i'm, I'm very interested in, in learning um 
for concrete things, for projects, for working out how to do things better. So I added that in as well. Uh, and you hopefully you'll be watching my latest videos and going, oh, OK, this is actually much more engaging. Uh, you know, you've done a, I've done a, a range of things. Uh, and most recently, just simply getting a swivel mount for that handlebar camera so I can cycle along, turn it around, talk to the camera for a minute about you know, the route, what I'm doing, what I'm thinking, go back to the road, and there's a very smooth transition with that. Um, so I've used that in shooting my last couple of videos, only one of which is uploaded so far. Uh, and for those, it's the end of the summer here, I want to take advantage of the bits of good weather, but I also thought, oh, you know, there's a fair bit of interest in, in bikepacking, uh, but a lot of people are, are nervous about it, you know, so I've joined the Facebook groups and all that for beginners and all that, and the questions people ask over and over are the ones they feel a little bit nervous about. Uh, so I thought I'll do a couple of basic introductory routes for people who live in Dublin so that if you're interested, you can basically just, if you have a bike, get your bike, get whatever bags you have, uh, and just set out on something that's straightforward. And so the most straightforward route I could think of was to make use of the two canals that go out of Dublin, the Royal Canal and the Grand Canal. Um, and that's, it, it, for one thing, it's fairly flat. You know, you're not necessarily having to deal with any big hills. A lot of Ireland is hills, so uh, that that's a straightforward thing in itself. Uh, and I've, so I've done an entire route that basically runs out the Grand Canal uh, to a point west of Loch Enel, then cuts up across the back of Loch Enel to the Royal Canal, about 35 kilometres, and then comes back in the Royal Canal uh, to get you back to Dublin. And that, you know, if, if, if you do that, you'll be camping maybe one or two nights, depending on what sort of distances you do. So it'll give you a full sense of what the experience experiences. The second video I've done uh, is much more of a, okay, now you think you want to go off on a trip, so let's do something really hard. And uh, there's a good hard run from Dublin, which is to go up the old the military road all the way down to Glenmalure. That's 1,700 metres of climb, lots of ups, lots of downs. Uh, you know, if you want to test what it feels like to be on a fully loaded bike, that's a great way of doing it. Uh, and I, I recommend it. That video should be up in the next couple of days and you'll be able to watch it. So my big uh, thing I'm also working on at the moment is this summer I went on my most ambitious trip to date, and that was to Scotland. Uh, and I basically spent a month cycling around the islands and highlands. Um, which was quite a test. And <laughs> part of the reason I did, the, did it this year is because as I get older, I was kind of going, oh, this is going to be pretty tough. I should probably get it out of the way. <laughs> Maybe I won't be able to do it in five years' time. Um, but yeah, that was a great trip. And I, when I came back, I immediately uploaded uh, basically my raw road footage. So that's that handlebar camera, the roads I'm cycling along. I now mostly shoot in time lapse. So you get this really fast view of it. Uh, and then as I've had time, I've been editing a day-to-day -day video diary, basically using highlights of that road footage and then uh, the photos I was taking with my phone as I went along. And then, you know, doing a report that is between, I think, the shortest, shortest of probably three and a half minutes, the longest for about 10 minutes, uh, where I talk about what that day was like. Uh, and I think they were pretty good to watch from start to finish. I'm on day 22. I have another seven days to go uh, because you get the whole idea of, sequences of events and the way they affect you so one thing that happens in scotland i had a wonderfully uh good weather start to it for the initial islands uh, and then around day 17 the first really heavy rain and wind started and i was looking at the forecast and realizing i was going to have at least a week of this so there's a whole series of days where day after day i the footage is me getting drenched or trying to talk to the camera in a very high wind and you can hardly make out any of the words. Um, and I think that's quite useful. And so sort of going, oh, okay, so this is what this feels like. If things are not going so great, um, you know, I still thoroughly enjoyed it. So I'm hoping that's part of what I'm trying to get across. Um, so the last thing is, well, what am I doing with the channel? And the answer to that is, I don't really know. Uh, as I said, I started uploading the video footage as much to have somewhere to store it as anything else. And then people are interacting with it. Um, and I kind of, I, I, I've been thinking about this and going to, part of the reason I took up bikepacking is because I've got to the stage in my life where I can take more holidays. I can take on paid leave from work. I have much more time for traveling. I've always really enjoyed traveling. Uh, you know, I've done quite a lot of international traveling. But we're in this climate crisis and we're headed and it's getting worse. Um, so I kind of didn't want to be 
taking a lot of extra time off and then flying all over the place and adding to that burden. So I was kind of looking for something that I would really enjoy and would be rewarding. It would not be a, a hair shirt or anything, um, but would enable me to go for go off for quite long periods of time. And also, of course, finance expensive to travel so how do you do stuff cheaply uh, particularly if you don't want if you want to travel locally and unfortunately Ireland, scotland etc they're quite expensive places for accommodation and things so bike packing was also my answer to that uh you know it's enabled me to uh spend weeks basically in each summer uh traveling but probably with a very very low impact uh, and also relatively cheaply i must do some videos on costs and how i manage all that because uh, i notice it's one of the things people ask about all the time and um, but that's the other thing i'm also trying to do is i'm identifying questions people have about bike bike packing and trying to answer them in particular about uh bike packing with an electric bike uh, you know, so one of the things I could see immediately from comments and discussions on Facebook groups and things was that what really concerns a lot of people is the idea that the batteries are going to run out in the middle of nowhere. And how do you keep the bike charged? So by far my most popular video is the video that just simply talks about how I was, how I've been doing that in practice. Uh, TLDR version is actually, it's nothing like as, as hard to keep it charged as you imagine, although it's re very useful to get two batteries. So you have uh, room for error and difficulty, but I've never had, a, I've never uh, managed to exhaust both the batteries. Uh, I've not even come all that close, except in a context where I am doing a B&B &B night. So I know I have a definite recharge uh, and I don't bother looking basically in that case, uh, I, you know, so then maybe I get towards the end. Anyway, that's where I am at the moment with the channel. Um, I'm going to be adding videos over the winter, which we're going to be processing things. I uh, processing my footage and my uh, photos from the summer and looking at what questions people have and trying to answer those questions. Uh, I think I'll also do a couple of experimental trips in the winter uh, in Ireland in in tough well, well in tough weather conditions uh, and try a winter kit see if I can keep myself warm and um, maybe also do a, a similar one that's just going between bed and breakfasts or whatever. Uh, and I will probably be doing some international travel this year again. You know, I'll probably be going to the Canaries in January because I find that sunlight really helps keep me sane through the winter. Um, and if I do that, I'm actually considering renting a, a gravel e-bike this time and doing a whole load of off-trail stuff. So I'll also be doing a report back on that. Uh, anyway, if you've made it this far through, make sure you follow the channel um, and do post comments uh, in particular because I monitor them. You'll see I answer them pretty fast. And a lot of the inspiration I get about what I should do, what I should talk about is, is coming from what people watching my videos have posted. Uh, so thanks for watching.